Welcome to today's presentation. I am a corporate pleb, and this is How to Corporate. Today we'll be reviewing how to be used within reason, how not to be exploited, and how you can protect yourself when you are not in a power position. At the heart of all corporate interactions, there's always a heavy focus on group projects. Every project, every product development, every event will be filtered through the lens of a group assembled to perform the job at hand. Those who remember their general education in college will recall that group projects means that five people gather together and only one to two people in the group actually perform the task. Corporate life is exactly this. That's why college focuses so heavily on group projects. It was to prepare you for work life. Except in the corporate world, the stakes are real, the grade is pass-fail, and the person doing all the work is always the lowest person on the totem pole. You, fellow pleb, are this person. As in, you are not in a power position, you are the sucker who will end up doing all the work on a project, and the rest of the team will benefit from your work while they did probably nothing. Just so we're clear. As you are not the shot caller, you will need to defend from a weak position in these scenarios. Those who have no authority in the corporate world must have the strongest defenses in place in order to get their work done without being overexploited. If you are silly enough to have an open door policy and help others as needed, you will be used in corporate life without any remorse or thanks. And not utilized, used specifically. You might trick yourself into thinking you're winning points with others by helping them. You aren't. You are only going to suffer. The moment you show that you are adept and willing to help is the moment you gave yourself everyone else's work on top of your own. You will receive no praise, no reward, no gratitude, and the moment you stop doing other people's jobs for them is the moment they instantly do not like or care about you. In fact, once you stop doing favors for people, they will actively dislike, ignore, and speak ill of you behind your back. People whom you help will not have a moment of clarity where they realize you are actively helping them put food on their table. They will notice when you are no longer doing that, get mad, and probably try and hurt you as revenge. Revenge for you not doing their job for them for free. Yes, people are that terrible. These people are your coworkers. So lesson one here, to be not exploited, is do not have an open door policy. So if an open door policy is a bad idea, when should you be helpful? You can't exist in the corporate world by not being a team player. Not at your end of the ladder in any case. So if you have to be helpful, but will be exploited mercilessly when you are helpful, how do you control the help you offer without being used and without seeming like an unhelpful team member who needs to be fired? That is, how do you control your inevitable exploitation by your coworkers? First, you have to square yourself with the reality that you will never be able to fully control it. You will regularly be exploited. You simply have to find a way to filter out the worst attempts of it and control the damage the exploitation of others will do to you. Second, you must set your control parameters. The corporate world understands boundaries and respects them if done right. If you set no boundaries, then there will be nothing to respect. No boundaries means no defenses. You are already defenseless insofar as your company didn't allow you any authority. So it is up to you to define your limits to set up those defenses. 
You will do this by understanding your policies and enforcing them as needed. Role or positional policy. Your position will have a defined list of expectations that you, the worker pleb, have to conduct no questions asked. But the much larger list in relation to your positional responsibilities is what is not officially outlined. What does that mean? It means you can get nitpicky. If task X being asked of you is not on the list of official responsibilities for your role, then you can cite your positional policy as not being responsible for task X. This can be boiled down to the age-old get-out-of-jail-free card of that's not in my job description. Learn your responsibilities as defined by your role and stick to them. Anything else asked of you is optional by definition. Second option here is your departmental policy. This is another piece of defense for you. Your department will have a specific place and task in the overriding organization that you will be able to take cover under. So if someone outside of your department asks you to do task X and task X is not within the realm of your department, you can immediately cite that it's not a task you have expertise or authority in and refer the asker to your manager. Generally speaking, no one is allowed in corporate life to make you color outside of your departmental lines. Next up here is your company policy. It's less important than positional and departmental policies and packs less of a punch because anyone asking you to do something out of bounds will fall under company policy as well. So you can cite company policy to avoid being exploited if what you are being asked to do steps even marginally on company policy lines. But you have to use this sparingly as citing company policy can bring in human resources and your manager if the person looking to use and exploit you is ready to fight on the subject. In fact, citing company policy as a reason to not do something will almost always ensure at least management will be brought in to force you to do the thing being asked. Usually you're gonna lose that battle and you have to do the ask and get people higher up mad at you. Um, so be careful, but just know your company policy in relation to your expected responsibilities. Last is your personal policy. Now you are allowed to have personal boundaries you can cite that you have a personal boundary in place for a specific task being asked of you. However, this can be a Hail Mary move, so use it wisely. For example, a personal boundary you can have is no weekend travel. I actually have that personal boundary and I've enforced it several times with people trying to exploit me to get to travel on a Sunday. But the trick here is just to make sure that you are able to have a personal policy and enforce it. Now, between these four policy-rooted defenses for you is to have an understanding of where your boundaries are and how those boundaries are supported by the company in relation to your department and position. You have to be able to articulate and relay the extents of your boundaries if you are pushing back on an ask. Remember, in the corporate world, you cannot simply say no when someone is looking to offload their work to you. You must have a reason for not doing a task, and that reason has to have a paper trail to be justified. Define it and enforce it when and where you can. Policies are your only defense against those above you looking to make their job your job. That being said, policies or not, most of the time, you will not be able to weasel out of being the sucker on a group project who does all the work while others get all the praise. Square yourself with that personal humiliation. It'll happen routinely. On occasion, your exploitation will bear fruit. This will only be in the form of quid pro quo arrangements. If you do something for someone and they return the favor at some point in time, keep an eye out for these types of opportunities when it benefits you to be exploited. It might sound selfish, 
but no one will give you anything, so you have to get it for yourself in corporate world. Once you get into a scratch my back, I'll scratch yours deal, it is important to not get so deep in allowing your own exploitation that you cannot back out on a moment's notice. People who do not learn how to back out end up working on weekends for free. And that's a sucker's move. Remember, your time and skills are seen as valuable resources to others. If you are lending your skills and time out for nothing and without rules and boundaries, you will be exploited shamelessly. Only assist others outside of your job description if there is a real return on investment and let the other party know your expectation in working on the project. Keep a sharp eye on the process as well. If the potential ROI returns or turns into no return on investment, then rescind your assistance immediately. Know when to call it and have a back out plan. Don't get into a sunk cost fallacy where you think, I've done so much work already, I might as well see it through. Never be afraid to drop whatever it is you are doing if you see it not working out for yourself. If you can't back out, button it up as quickly as possible and still be able to feasibly say you did task X that you agreed to. So speaking of return on investment, what can you actually look for? What does that look like? Usually all you can get by being exploited by others willingly, uh, usually what you're getting is positive politicking. Social politicking is important in corporate life. It is a form of currency. Sometimes the trade-off in helping someone is letting them know through your action of controlled, allowed exploitation of yourself that you are a resource for them. The leech who is sucking your blood wants you around to continue using you. What this can equate to is when it's firing season, if the leech has the ear of the boss or their opinion is in any way going to affect who gets canned and they want you around to use, they will effectively be on your side and someone else will get fired. Politicking isn't pretty, but that's corporate life. All you need to ask yourself is if you put food on your table or not. That's why you're there. It isn't uh, how you play the game, it's really just down to win or lose. Control your exploitation with justifiable and enforceable policies and extend help to those with enough authority to influence the executioner to pass on your head when it's on the block. If someone has looking to exploit you and has nothing to offer, weave your policy magic to get them to evaporate and only help those who can help you in kind. Thank you for joining me. Please come back and explore the corporate world from the standpoint of a common worker pleb at any time. See you soon.